Okay. Oh, yes, that's better. Very good evening to everyone and uh, thank you for coming tonight. Um, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We want to give you all the glory. We want to give you all the praise. And we want to give you all the adoration. Heaven and earth may pass away. But not your word. Your word will by no means pass away. So we thank you for today. We give you the glory for everyone that has come in this place. For everyone that is under the sound of my voice. Father, I pray that you will speak a word in the heart. We have different situations. There are so many storms in our life. And we want you to steal those storms. And I give you all the glory that we would all go back home with a word from the Lord. Not just the word of God. Mm -mm. The word from the Lord. That you will speak directly into our heart in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen. Okay. Uh, we have um, those in books. As you've noticed, God has blessed us with wonderful e-books. So, bye-bye those sheets. <laughs> so, bye-bye to all those sheets in the name of Jesus. There were so many of them, and we had to print uh, again and again whenever we did new songs. So, now you have uh, more than a thousand songs or so. But do you have two ta almost 2,000 songs? So you... Yeah, 1,000 1, something. So this is good for us. We don't need to be printing so many things in the name of Jesus. So everything is free, but... Uh, <laughs> they said to me that I should say that you should not take it home. <laughs> You can take all the other books, but don't take this one home. <laughs> There's if I don't remind the people, they might carry that home. So I need to say that you should not carry this one home. You should leave it back. Uh, yes. So we give God the glory. Someone just donated uh, these books to us. So we thank God for for that because the gospel is free but it takes money to advance it so we thank God for that one generous person in the name of Jesus and uh, yes so we'll be using these ones and we would buy more and more as uh, we grow in the name of uh, Jesus so that is uh, one thing and then of course you have as usual on the seats the the dates of the Healing Crusades, uh, next month, when will be next month? I need one card. Oh, it will be Easter, Easter weekend. I have one here. It will be Easter weekend, yeah. I don't even follow all those things. Uh, the 20th of April. So that will be the next month in the name of... Uh, Jesus. But I want to ask you to do us a favor and to pray with us because one of the things that we are believing God for is for another venue where we will be able to have the church and the healing crusade in the same building. Because it is not practical for us to be having uh, two venues and this is the second year, no, no this is the third year. 30 year now. Uh, I, I know, of course, that we would lose a lot of people because when we started in the Govan, in PST Institute with the Healing Crusade, the first night we had about 40 something people that came. It grew, the second uh, one. And then when we left the uh, PST Institute in Govan to come here, we lost 98%. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, uh, it, we came here so that we would be close to the world the church is. 
and um, that's one of the reasons but we could not do that in the same uh, building because they don't want us to be using that every month during the evening uh, time so once a year it's okay but not every month this would require the staff to be coming uh, every month so plus the parties that people do uh, every Saturday in that venue so it means that the staff will be working every single weekend so which I understand as well so that's why we came here because this is not from the council this is private um, so but what God is laying on our heart is to reach out to the people so the drunkards the homeless the drug addicts every other person that's one of the reasons also that we came to the community because we used to be in a trap in a hotel hotel you could only enter there if you are wearing the suit <laughs> and then we moved to the caledonia university so that we can have more people but even the caledonia university they could not allow us to have uh, drunk because if you came that you you were not properly dressed they would think that you would steal the computers and so on and so forth so we had to leave Caledonia to come to this community, uh, Mary Hill, uh, so Woodside Hall, so that anyone can just walk into the building. We want a building where we'll be able to pray, we'll be able to have our own keys, come at the time that we want, <laughs> leave at the time that we want, and uh, also, uh, uh, you call it uh, minister to the people have a food bank in that uh, building and uh, have alcoholic anonymous uh, the, what do you call it uh, narcotic anonymous and so many other things that's what is in our heart to do of course which will cost us also more money than what we are spending right now but i truly don't worry about the money because one way or the other god has always been providing for us without us having to beg for anything. So, pray with us for a venue. So, which uh, initially, the fix that I fix, one thing that has delayed, because I wanted to stay close to the city center. I wanted to stay, because here, within a walking distance, you are already on the Sokiho streets. So, I wanted to stay closer to the, to the city center. But uh, and I was targeting the church that is just on uh, Great Western Road. It's not far from here. But I've written to the Church of Scotland. They gave it to a charity, and that charity does not want Christians to be holding service in that thing anymore. So they are only doing theater and the secular thing, the rock climbing, but they don't want to hear any about, uh, anything about church anymore. And the Church of Scotland, because they already released it to that charity, I need to go through that charity, and that charity doesn't want to hear anything about uh, Christianity anymore. So, uh, the other option is that we move away from this side of, uh, of the town, <laughs> and uh, where, I don't know yet, we are praying for a couple of uh, venues, and uh, one venue as well is uh, would be in G52. Uh, we are praying for that. That uh, after govern uh, G51 is govern G52 is after govern. Uh, which through those who are traveling from England who are traveling from uh, uh, Ayrshire, <laughs> it totally does, it does not matter because <laughs> wherever it is in. Uh, the funny thing is, is the people that are in Glasgow that are picky <laughs> about the location. But people that come from England, Wales, they really don't care what the location of the thing is. And um, we've gone through lots of uh, storms in the House of Prayer for All Nations. Some storm have blown away 99% of the church. Other storm have blown away 100% uh, of the church so I'm truly not afraid to step out alone okay 
I'm truly not afraid to step out alone. And I'm never alone because Jesus Christ is with me. That's what Jesus says. My Father who sent me, he's with me. So the only thing that we need is to hear from the Lord, not from man, okay? When I came here, I told you I came here with 500 in my pocket. 500. And I was in a hotel for 10 days and paying 50 pounds a day. So in 10 days, <laughs> I'll be in the streets. So I said, God, you said to me I should come here. So you need to do something. One way or the other, the Lord provided for me. And uh, I settled down in Glasgow. I always go by faith. And I remember, it was in 2015, when we left the other church to start now the House of Prayer for All Nations. We started that house on a resurrection day. Yeah, <laughs> we did not even know. Uh, God said to me, come out. Uh, even if you come out on your own, come out. Because you need to go do the work that I have now for you. So we came out and uh, we handed over all the members of the other church to that church. So 100% of the people, we handed them over and we started the fresh. So we are about hearing what God is saying to us. Because the aim is not to, to do what we want, but to do what God wants. And one of the things that I want to have in that church is a place for women who are homeless. Yes. So that's one of the reasons why we want a church building. Uh, so, so pray for us. Pray for us. June is a good month for us. But we need to negotiate with other people. If God says yes, okay. If he does not say yes, we will look for another venue. But if he says yes, June or July, we will uh, try to reorganize a lot of things. And uh, maybe, the reason why I'm saying that is because we printed that for the whole year. That's the problem. And we already have uh, July, August, up to December. So if we have to move into a new venue, in uh, by July or August, it would not be financially wise for us to keep on paying for this venue just because we printed that uh, for the whole year. Some people will still come to this venue, but uh, uh, we would have to relocate that in that uh, venue. It's a good place. It has 400. Uh, uh, 400, the main hall has 470 uh, places, beautiful. The other small hall has uh, 160, the other hall has um, 40, and there are small rooms, meeting rooms of 20, 20, and the small conference room of 10. Uh, the plan is also to make some showers. That's what I'm having in my head. <laughs> so that those women can actually wash. And take a bath and all that. And uh, it's good also that this is far from the, the, the city center. Because if they decide to come, they will not be able to come back at night uh, in the city center and drink and do all the other things as well. So that's what is in my heart. Uh, I'm telling you so that you can pray because the church is supposed to pray. And uh, you pray for us that God will give us favor. When I look at things, I look at the church, the healing crusade, lots of people come. When I look at the church, sometimes I count two people, three people, four people, and it has always been like this. The big, the, I think it went up to 20, when we, 20, 30, when we were with the other church. But after that, when all the other members went, so we started again from zero. Uh, but the kind of mind will say, count the number of people, actually close down the church and go into a house and be doing a, a house close. Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. I don't do that. <laughs> but Isaiah 54 says, seeing you barren, 
do not have not born children. For the children of the barren are actually more than those of the one that, that is conceiving. And he said, stretch your curtain. So how come I don't have children, meaning I don't have disciples, I don't have a, a big flock? And God, you are saying that I should uh, stretch my tent. Because the land that is desolate would again going to be filled. My heart is beating, not for those who are wearing suits, but for the ex-drug addicts like my friend, <laughs> the ex-drunkards. That's where my heart is, actually. That's why I came out of the hotel, I came out of the... The, the university to come to a community building, to reach out to the needy, the poor, the prostitutes, those who are actually hurting. And of course, those who are educated like you, you will always come. <laughs> but that's where my heart is. Mission. Mission and mission reaching out. So, if that sounds good to you, the field is white for harvest. And I'm telling you, the laborers are always a few. But don't say that there are still four months, six months for the harvest to come. No, 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 lift up your eyes. It is now that we need laborers. So, whosoever, like Moses says, is of a willing heart, let him or her come and work in the Lord's uh, vineyard. It is not my vineyard, <laughs> it is the Lord's uh, vineyard. So that's what is in my heart. So pray with us. So if we tell you that we are relocating in G52, so don't feel bad that we are no longer in G20. <laughs> because we need to reach out to the souls that are dying. And we need to do that the, a better way, where we can actually minister to the people. That's what is on my heart. And I share that with you because you are the church of God and the church is supposed to pray. So we have our mission praise and we are going to sing unto the Lord number 25 in this book. All to Jesus I surrender. Oh, we are going to sing 1168. Everyone need compassion. 1168. 1168. 1168. I need to find it. One one six eight. Everyone needs compassion. I don't know if you know it, but I know that you need compassion today, and I need compassion. Uh, the Lord said to me that I did not have enough compassion. <laughs> I thought I got it, but this, an incident happened where I was not sensitive enough. So many times when you deal with uh, healing a lot, because you've seen it, for you it is not a big thing. But for the people who are going through those things, it's a big thing. And I realized, with the feedback that I got from that person, the Lord said to me that I was not sensitive about many things. And I was not that compassionate. So we all need compassion because as you read the Bible, Jesus was always moved with compassion. Even when he raised the dead, it was uh, because he was moved with compassion for that widow. Not for the son that was dead, but she already was a widow. And now she's uh, bearing her only son. The Bible says when he saw that she was about to bury her only son, she he was moved with uh, compassion. And everywhere you see things, Jesus dealing with situations, he's first of all moved with that pity is not compassion. NIV translates compassion with uh, the word pity. It's a wrong translation. Pity 
is not the compassion. You see a bed on the, on the street, you throw some coin, that's pity. But you will still remain there tomorrow. Compassion goes beyond pity. You find a way of getting that person out of that situation. So be it for homelessness, for drunkenness, for healing, for marriage, and every aspect of life. Let us not just have a pity. Everyone can have a pity. Let us be moved with compassion. So everyone needs compassion. And the kindness of a Savior. Savior, we all need compassion. We all need the kindness of a Savior. We all need forgiveness. And we know that you can move the mountains of our life. Father, we want you to heal us. Spirit, soul, and the body. And transform the situation around our life. Father, there are storms in our life. We want you to speak the storm of our life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, let us have our seat. You know, there is not always physical healing. Are you with me? Paul says in, to the Thessalonian church, I want to present you to God holy with W-H, not uh, holy of H-O. So, holy, whole as a person, complete as a person, spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. The true gospel would address those three aspects of your life. It would address your spirit when you are born again, because once you were dead in your sins and in your trespasses, so when you are born again, you are now alive to God, but dead to sin. For this my son, Luke chapter 15, was dead and now he's alive. He was lost and now he's found. So when you are born again, it is your spirit, your spirit that was once dead, that receives life, even the Zoe life, even the eternal life of God. Now we need to address your soul. Your soul is the seat of your emotions and your intellect. God cares about your emotions. He cares about your mind. Because God has not given us a spirit of fear. Fear involves torment. But God has given us a spirit of power, of love, and of sound mind. He wants to address your mind. He wants to address your emotions so that you are not like a roller coaster. Today you are here, tomorrow you are there. And how will God do that the transformation of your soul? It will be mainly through the washing of the water of the word of God that would brainwash you, but with the word of God. Not brainwash you in the negative way, but it will remove every unclean thought, every unclean aspect of your life. The word of God. That's why you have some Christians, they are going to heaven. Because they gave their life to Christ, their spirit is fixed. They received eternal life. But, the way of thinking, the way of reasoning has not changed. Because, uh, and they are still an emotional rank. Why? Because they were not fed with the word of God, so that the mind will be renewed. After you are born again, you need the Bible studies to renew your mind. Paul constantly talks about the mind renewal. And many times people even fall into sin because they don't have the word of God. The Corinthian church was sinning even better than the, the, the pagan. When Paul is writing to the Corinthian church, he's saying to them, it's simply because you don't know who you are. If you knew that you were a new creation, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. And all things in you are of God. That you are now the temple of the Holy Ghost. That you no longer should have fellowship with uh, the unfruitful works of darkness. It's, you need to expose all those things. If you truly knew that you were a peculiar uh, a people, you were precious in the eyes of God, then you would no longer act that way. So we tell them, let me tell you who you are. He calls them, you are saints. 
you don't become a saint after you are canonized by the Catholic Church. That's a lie. When you are born again, you are a saint. Are you with me? Because the Holy Spirit, saint means a holy. The Holy Spirit or the spirit of holiness is now in you. That's why even for the Christian that was sinning in the church of Corinth, the first chapter of Corinth, Paul called them saints. He's writing to the, I am a saint, you are a saint if you are born again. You don't need to be canonized by anyone. You are a saint. So now let me tell you how saints are supposed to behave. Let me tell you what happened when you became a saint. This is what happened. He set you apart to sanctify, to set you apart. You are no longer in this world, even if you are still in the world. So he had to renew the mind by teaching them the word of God. And in chapter 2, the Corinthian, you see how they changed. Because they changed the way they were thinking. Now, after we've addressed your souls and your emotions, your intellect, the word of God would always benefit you to make you wise. If you lack wisdom, Jim says what? Ask. And God will give you that wisdom. Because God's plan is to prosper you in every aspect of your life. So he will give you wisdom. He will give you knowledge. Isaiah chapter 11. Are you with me? From 1 to 3. The seven manifestation of the Holy Spirit. It is not the seven Holy Spirit. There is only one Holy Spirit. Are you with me? There is only one brother Jerry. But he has different hearts. Today is a preacher. <laughs> On uh, tomorrow night, you'll be a carer. <laughs> in, a, in a government. <laughs> And one, so Monday morning, you would have another cup. <laughs> You'll be doing research. <laughs> it's the same Jerry. He's wearing three or four cups. It's the same Jerry. It's the same Holy Spirit, but it has different functions. So, we are talking about the seven manifestation or the seven aspect of the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit of the Lord. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you also receive the Spirit of adoption. Through whom you are crying out, Abba Father, God becomes your Father. So the first manifestation of the Holy Spirit would make you the son or the daughter of God. The Spirit of the Lord. And the second is the Spirit of Wisdom. Because when you come to Christ, I don't know about you, but I was stupid. So I needed some wisdom. Immediately it gives you wisdom. So that you stop falling into the same trap. In the spirit of wisdom. Just ask. James says, ask now. He will give you that wisdom. And then, he will give you the knowledge. It's also the spirit of knowledge. You start now understanding the Bible. But that wisdom is not just for the church. What you could not understand in school before, you would understand that now. The knowledge that you could no longer retain when you were in school before Christ, now you'll be able to retain that knowledge. Because now the Holy Spirit uses the spirit of wisdom and of knowledge. It's also the spirit now of understanding. You can know something, but you do not understand it. You now give your understanding of things. Are you with me? In business, in every aspect of life. That's why Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they were studying the University of the Babylon and they did not know the language, they had to learn the language, but they were ten times better. Because the Holy Spirit that was in them, the spirit of excellence, was the spirit of wisdom, was the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of understanding. Even if you do not understand the language. We have access to many things simply because we don't know. My people perish for lack of knowledge. And then it is the spirit of what? Of counsel. It will give you godly counsel. There are many devices in the hearts of men. We have many plans, but we only want the plan of God to stand. So he gives you wise counsel. 
is your counselor, the Holy Spirit. And that is the spirit of what again? Have the fear of the Lord. The spirit, the spirit of might. Because God wants you to have power. Power to heal the sick, to cast out devils, to cleanse the lepers, to raise the dead, but also power to get the uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. It is God who gives you power to get the wealth. So that he might establish his uh, confidence. If you don't have money, there is no church. Full stop. So God wants to give you money so that you can prosper his uh, work. If Christians do not understand it, then we will not prosper. Because the only reason why God gives you money is so that you can prosper his work. He gives you power to get wealth so that you may establish his covenant. And then is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And the fear of the Lord is to do what? To depart from evil. The fear of the Lord is not to wear long robes and work. No, 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 no. If you are fearful of God, you will not sin against God. You can wear whatever you want to wear. Are you with me? You can have a scarf or you cannot have a scarf. God is not the stupid. And the angels are not stupid either. They know this is a female. This is a man. Even if you wear a long hair. They are not stupid. They will not deliver the message that was to a man, to a woman, because that uh, woman has a short hair. No. So it is not about your hair. It's not about you covering your hair or not covering your hair. It is not about you wearing long sleeves or short sleeves for women. It is about <laughs> you fearing the Lord by stopping to do evil. Are you with me? So these are the seven manifestations of the Holy Spirit in your life. So if you truly have the Holy Spirit and you know what is in the Holy Spirit, you know that God is my Father. And if God is your Father, who cares about what other people say about you? I am fearfully and I am wonderfully made. Marvelous are the works of God's hand. And my soul knows it very well. You need to know that your Father sees you, you are the I always say to my mom, I'll know it to my mom, you are Miss Universe. I've never seen a beautiful woman like you. And when I used to grow up, we had roses. So we were always competing with my brothers. Who will make that bouquet for my mother? But I always wake up early, they wake up late. So at 4 a.m. I'm already up. And I wake up all the roses. All of them, I cut them. And I make a good big bouquet for my mother. <laughs> when they wake up, there's no flower for them to make a bouquet for my mother. Because in my eyes, she's the most beautiful woman. That's how God sees you. Know who you are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. When I was in Manchester, some pastor came to say to me, you need to stop giving flowers to people. So that's when I stopped giving flowers. But I still give flowers to some people. I give flowers to my mother today. So he's now obliged to buy flowers. Because I love flowers. Are you with me? Because I only see the beauty of God. The beauty of his creation. God loves me. He loves me. And he loves you the same way. He loves you as much as he loves his son, Jesus. So God wants to fix your emotions so that you will see yourself the way he sees you. So the God will affect the spirit, but the soul as well. Your emotions and your intellect. That you will be able to go back to school, graduate, and move on with your life. Not just in church. The Jews understood one thing. If they don't have a lobbying power, they have no voice. They almost were annihilated in the days of Esther. Because uh, Haman was in the palace. And he said to the king, 
Those are the people that is troubling you. Just kill all of them. And the tax money that they were supposed to pay, I would pay it in your treasury. The king did not care about who that the people was. He said, give me the money in my treasury and annihilate all of them. From that day, the Jews understood they need to have a lobbying power. In every sphere, they are there. That they would have a voice for the people. So God doesn't want you just to sing in church, have the knowledge of the Bible. No. He wants you to have influence in your place of work. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were governors, not in church. There's no governor in church. They were governors in the cities. And they were found ten times better than all the magicians, than all the Freemasons, and all the free uh, the Rosicrucians. You are supposed to shut your God is better than your God in your place of work. That's why he gave you the Holy Spirit, the Spirit to have the Lord, the Spirit to have wisdom, the Spirit of understanding, the Spirit of knowledge, the Spirit of counsel, the Spirit of might, and the Spirit of the fear of the Lord. Even when you are being promoted in your place of work, you will still fear the Lord like Daniel was fearing the, the Lord. Are you with me? And then also now, the Bible says you would address the spirit, soul, and the body. The body, that's what we have our physical uh, healing and all the other things that pertain to life and godliness. Now, I had to speak about those things because God wanted me to speak about them. But I want you to read M Mark chapter 4. God wants to talk about the storms of our life. Mark chapter 4. Everybody here today is a Christian. So we would share the word of God and after that we would pray. Because there is no one that is looking for, apart from, apart from some, some people that I know, uh, I know everybody in, the, in this room, so I know what is inside this room. So, Mark chapter 4, from 35 to 41. God wants to address the storms of your life. You and I are going through different storms. So God, sorry, sorry. Okay, I will no longer move that way. God would, wants to address the storms of your life. <coughs> so, Mark chapter five, 4, from 35 to 41. He says, on the same day, when evening had come, he, Jesus, said to them, his disciples, let us cross to the other side. Jesus is saying to you, let us cross to the other side. Before you embark on any journey, you need the word from the Lord. I'm not asking you to have the word of God. You can quote from Genesis to Revelation. People have a problem with me. Because when they come to me, I say to them, what did God say to you? Pastor Nancy, what did I say to you? What did God say to you? I don't want you to quote me, Genesis, you are a pastor, you know the Bible better than I do. <laughs> From Genesis to, Apoc uh, to Revelation, I don't want that. That's the Logos. What did God say to you? Because you only are able to wage warfare, Paul says to Timothy, with the prophecy or the utterance or the oracle of the Lord that you received. You'll be able to come back to God, God, this is what you said concerning the situation. So before you embark on any journey, you need the word from the Lord. You may receive it through a man of God, through a prophet, through an apostle, through an evangelist, but the word from the Lord. The word from the Lord. The sister, she's in our church. She came, she said, she also attends other churches. She said, I attend three churches on Sunday. And the, all the other churches, nobody ever says to me, this is what God says, go do this. I say, because I hear from the Lord. <laughs> the Bible says, his sheep hears from the Lord. Amen. I'm supposed to hear from the Lord. The Bible tells me that God would instruct you. And he will teach you the way to go. 
and he would guide you with his eye. A true shepherd would tell you, this is the way, this is the way, this is the way. He would not be saying uh, vague things. He would give you clear-cut directions. So she had immigration problems. She wanted, she it was a divorce. And she wanted to go back to her back home. I said, don't worry. This is what God says. And someone says to her, you need to get married quick, quick, quick. They found her someone so that they would marry. I said, you don't need. The God whom I serve is, is a power is not limited. <laughs> so listen to what I'm telling you to do. This is the instruction now. And God will deliver you. Within a short time, they gave her indefinite leave to remain. Instead of sending her back to her country, like the husband was writing the letter to the home office. So, and now she had a child. Uh, before that, the first marriage. And uh, the sole custody, the court, gave the sole custody of the child to the father. The child is now 12. So, she was trying to fight uh, with, uh, with the court and so on and so forth. So I said to, to, to her, don't worry. The guy will give you full custody of the child. So after 12 years he had a child, he said, don't worry. You don't need to fight. But I will pray. And this week, okay, yeah, this week, she texted me, praise the Lord. I was at work, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I don't know what happened. But my ex-husband, the first one, gave me full custody of my uh, son. So now my son can leave my country to come and join me here in uh, the UK. Are you with me? Clear, we are not blind people. Clear cut direction that you don't need to go around this mountain for 40 years and waste your time. You don't need to waste your time. Clear cut direction. Because that's what God wants. That's what God that's the reason why God took the shepherd. They watch over your soul and they give account to God. And they come before God. There's a storm in the life of this sister. The, the second marriage is going into shambles. The, the, the police is involved. The husband is violent. And so, and so. Deliver this sister from this thing. But don't send her back home. She wants to stay here. I always say to her, what do you want? I sat with her. I said, what do you want? She said, my immigration. I said, I should, I should go back home. I said, don't look at him because she said, what do you want? Because my God says, delight in the Lord your God and he will give you the desires of your heart. What do you want? And I will agree with what you want. Not with the homos. I never agree with them. I agree with your heart desires. Because my God says, he will grant you your heart desires. And once you tell me your heart desires, if two of us shall agree on earth as touching concerning anything, it will be done by my Father who is in heaven. So don't tell me what the Lord you say. Don't tell me what the home office says. Don't tell me what the, the, the doctor said. These are just facts. Tell me what do you want. And our God is more than able to do that. So you need a word from the Lord. Not just the word of God. You need a word from the Lord in your situation. When I was going to Dong therefore, there are also some words from the Lord that you don't want to listen to them. And I sat there, the Lord said, today, you are going to be numbered among the transgressors. I did not like that word because it led me to Dong therefore. But that was the word from the Lord. So that's why when I was in the detention room, I was singing and dancing. They thought I was crazy because I know God was in this week and I'm going to come out. If you have faith, you would act like Paul and Silas. Are you with me? Don't talk about Paul and Silas. Leave out the word of God. So receive the word from the Lord concerning your situation, concerning the storm of your life. Receive the word from the Lord. If the people around you don't have faith, find new people that have faith. If people say to you that you are crippled, you are going to remain crippled forever, find four other friends that will carry you on the mat. 
even when they shall not stay, but they cannot come through. They will climb up on the roof, remove the tiling, and let you down. Amen. Find new friends. Those friends that are wasting your time, teach them. Find new friends that will lead you where you are going, that will help you in your journey of faith. Not everybody is supposed to be your friends. The Bible says in the book of Wisdom of Proverbs, the righteous chooses his friend carefully. Not every pastor is close to me. I'm telling you the truth. Not every pastor, even if you have a title of Bishop, Archbishop, Pope, not every pastor is close to me. Because I know they talk, but the faith is little. I want you to stand with me. To stand with me till the end. It is hard to find people that will stand with you till the last moment. Including weeping with you. Hallelujah. Because this is also part of Christianity. It is all because we have storm. Jesus also had a storm in his life. His cousin John the Baptist was in prison. Luke chapter 7. John the Baptist sent a, a message. Are you the one to come? He was panicking. Or do I look for another? Including men of God that preach the word of God. When we are going through storms, many of us abandon Jesus. We are looking for other ways. We are trying to ask God again. Are you the true Messiah? Are you the solution? Can you move the mountains? Or do I need to look for an exit? <laughs> Hallelujah. And John the Baptist was beheaded. John the Baptist was uh, beheaded. And Jesus said to his disciples, I need to go somewhere and rest because he was affected by that uh, news. He raised a lot of people from the dead. But he did not raise the John the Baptist from the dead. His own cousin. Are you with me? When you are in this, uh, in this work of the Lord, there are pain that you carry, that if you are not careful to cast that burden to the Lord, it will just crush you. Are you with me? A friend of mine, is a, I know things that I can't say, which is very, very difficult. His father, his, uh, father was, ha had cancer. The father was never a Christian. And God said to me, he's going home. But I need not to negotiate with God. That's what intercession is all about. I need to negotiate with uh, the Lord. So they went to Spain for holiday. They did not tell his family that he had uh, terminal cancer. And he collapsed in Spain. So the son was... Uh, an unbeliever. But the wife, the, do, the, the son, the, the, the daughter-in-law was a J Jamaican believer. So they called me. So this is what this happened to the father. He could no longer speak. He was in a vegetable uh, coma. So I knelt by my bedside. I prayed. Oh God. <laughs> oh God. Because I, I hate praying for mercy. I hate. That's why I prefer to Christian while living a clean life. So that I can come boldly before the throne of grace. I say, God, this is your son. The prayer of deliverance belongs to the children. But when they are living anyhow, they are not Christian, then we are praying like that uh, Syrophoenician woman that is asking for crumbs to heal uh, that the person. So God said to me, okay, I will bring him back so that he can receive Jesus. So I prayed, and then he came out. Now, I sent a text message to, the, to his son, who was not a Christian, and the son was leading his father through a text message to Christ. So as he was leading his own father himself, he led himself also to Christ. And he saw his, the, the face of his father just glowing, 
glowing, glowing. And then he stayed with them for 24 hours. And then he went to sleep again. I said, God, no. So I went back on my knees. And I saw a chariot coming. I said, God, I don't want any chariots. Do you understand what a chariot is? Like Elijah was going to heaven. So God said, he's going to heaven. So I've done my part. God said, no, I want you here. I want you here. When did they cremate the guy? Even when they put him on the, that uh, conveyor to, uh, so that he would cremate. The son still put me on loudspeaker. I was praying, sha da 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 As the body was being cremated. Until the last moment, I will stand with you. That's who we are. We would petition heaven. We would plead with heaven. Even when they are opening the fire to cremate the body, up to the last minute, we would petition heaven. And when we don't have our way, we will now turn to you and comfort you. Because the Bible says comfort one another. Because that's now a new journey, a new storm that is starting in the family. Are you with me? 18th of February, was it last year? Yeah, last year. I went to officiate the, uh, a funeral. I'm officiating a funeral in the evening I have a healing crusade. How can I be two people? I can't be two people having that sad and that uh, grievance bearing the wife of my friend and then in the evening come and preach but the deaf heard that night. Hallelujah. <laughs> the cancer were healed. God was still there. He never left us. He never forsook us. Are you with me? He was still there. And many times I had to go to a funeral, even officiate the funeral myself, and come back to the healing crusade and pray God is still healing the cancer. We stand with the people to the end, through the storms of the life. And what you are going through, in one way or the other, other people also are going through it. Recently, as I was praying, a friend of mine, it shook me to the core. And uh, Jesus said to me, Victory, I woke me in the morning on the day of the funeral, on the 20th. He said, Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. Oh, oh. I said, God, you are saying victory belongs to me. I don't want that song. I want my father back. I was not happy with God. <laughs> but the angel was singing, victory belongs to Jesus. The angel was singing. So when I went to the service, they also sang that song. I said, God was in the service. To the end, we stand with the people. In the good time, in the bad time. We stand with the people. There are storms that we are going through. But let us not go through those storms alone. I guarantee you that Jesus is in that boat with you. Amen. He's in that boat with you. I'm not going to read it again. You are going to read it to the end. But Peter said to Jesus, Don't you care that we are perishing? Don't you care? That my beloved one is no longer here. Don't you care that I've been in this marriage for five years and there's no child? Don't you care that I'm turning 32 and I'm not married? Don't you care that I'm getting close to my 30s and I'm not married? Don't you care? Don't you care? I'm turning 36 this year and I'm not married. Hey, 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 hey. Don't you care? Six of March at 10.36. Don't you care? I was angry. Oh, my birthday, I was very angry. <laughs> happy birthday to him. I want a happy birthday. I was very angry. <laughs> the 
Oh, that was in the Lord. That's what happy birthday. Don't you care? Don't you care what I'm going through? Sometimes God appears to be silent. He appears to be asleep on the pillow, but neither sleep nor slumber. He who watches over Israel, neither sleeps nor slumbers. Sometimes your immigration situation looks like it is impossible that God has gone to sleep on you and on your file. They put it somewhere, they are no longer looking at it. He neither sleeps nor slumbers. I'm telling you that Jesus is with you in that boat. I may not experience everything that you are experiencing. It is impossible for us to experience everything that the people life here are experiencing. But I can enter into your suffering by standing with you, by telling you, like God said to Isaiah in Isaiah 3 verse 10, say to the righteous, it shall be well with them. It shall be well, it shall be well with them. Because the victory belongs to Jesus. Whenever I sit down and I think of my spiritual father who went to be with the Lord, I see again those angels singing on that 20th. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. And I saw him wearing gold, gold. That's what brought, brought comfort to my heart. That's what brought the comfort to my heart. Because even Jesus of the tomb of Lazarus, the Bible says, Jesus, sir, he wept. We need to have uh, compassion. Every one of us need uh, compassion. In the storms that we are going through, we need the true friends that will stand by us. Even we that are ministering the healing, we also go through sickness and uh, disease. Are you with me? Including myself. <laughs> Are you with me? And when I cannot pray anymore, even on Wednesday we had Bible, Bible, Bible study at home, home fellowship. Yes. I knelt down and I said to them, pray for me. But I also have uh, problems. Paul always said in his letter, pray for me. Pray for me. I know that your prayer in Philippines, he said, I know that your prayer will turn out for my deliverance. We need to pray for one another. So we are all going through one storm or the other. But it is because on the other end of the storm, God is going to use you mightily. When you now turn to chapter 5 of Mark, the reason why there was a storm at sea it is because God wanted to deliver that madman of Gadara, who was bound with a legion of demons. So Satan was not happy about that. He raised the hell so that they would not make it. But remember the word from the Lord. He said, let us cross to the other side. Did not say we would drown in here. Are you with me? When I was in Dongevo, I received my free letters of deportations, my free tickets <laughs> through Karik, <laughs> going through Kenya. <laughs> I said, what would I do in Kenya? You want to bring me to Kenya? And then from there, I would take another plane to, to my country. So the Bible says you need to take a captive every thought that exalts itself against the, the knowledge of the word of God. The devil will give you now thoughts because through your thoughts you would agree with the devil. So as after, because I spent 42 days of captivity there, <laughs> and I started out to think, oh, after all, I can go and work for this oil company, Total. I can go and I have my auntie that works there. I started out to make a plan. Oh, immediately say, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> I'm going nowhere. God did not send me <laughs> anywhere else. I'm here to stay. So whenever now I would have those thoughts of making the life back home, I would arrest those thoughts. Take every thought captive. 
that exalt itself against the knowledge of the word of God. What did God say to you? Did he say to you, you are going to be single your whole life? No. When my brother and I, we pray every day with my brother at 5 a.m. Uh, we always pray. We are not eunuchs. Paul made himself a eunuch for the Lord. That's what Jesus says. Some have made themselves a eunuch. Paul said, I don't want destruction with uh, women and they're always crazy. So, sorry. <laughs> but, <laughs> Troublesome. So I don't want any destruction. That was the, the, that was the viewpoint of Paul. For him, it was a destruction. So he made himself a eunuch for the sake of the gospel. Now, when my brother and I we pray, we remind God, God, we are not eunuchs for the gospel. We are supposed to get married. I'm praying for my twins already. I pray for my children. I, I, I pray, God, you would redeem all the years. I want twins and twins again. <laughs> That's my prayer. Are you with me? I'm not a eunuch for the Lord. I'm not. Find someone else, not me. Are you with me? So every other, because Paul talks about false religion in Colossian, ascetism, a wisdom that uh, appears to man. But this is not from the Lord. This is from a religion. So you can be so religious that you feel that I'm doing that for the Lord. I'm consecrating myself. God said, Mary, Jesus, honorable. She'll be honored by everyone. So if you decide to get married, go get married, but only in the Lord. So we all are going through storms. And even if the devil says to you, oh, you are getting in your 40s, then you are barren. Menopause has already stayed, set in. Arrest that thought. A friend of mine, you used to see him here in the healing crusade. They had one child with his wife. Whenever I was going to the wife's, uh, to the house, I almost have to beg so that we can pray. And the wife was, was never in the mood of uh, prayer. They were on the, ver on the verge of divorce, and then things went from bad to worse. They removed the first. She was pregnant, and she, the, the pregnancy went through the fallopian tube, so they had to remove that uh, fallopian tube. That was uh, last year, this December, something. Uh, yes. No, before December, they removed that thing. So the doctor said, uh, uh, be happy with only the only child that you have. You will never have another one. So I went to the hospital. Because I have the word from the Lord. Not just the word of God, but the word from the Lord. So I spoke to them that God has done that again and again. So they are going to have the owner. One after God. And when, God, when the devil took away uh, Abel, when Cain killed Abel, God replaced it with Seth. Full stop. So I prayed and I left. To cut the story short, she delivered, uh, I think, two months ago now. No, two, two, two months ago, roughly, two months ago now. So I went to see uh, the baby in the hospital, and I told them, you see, God loves you. Now stop your foolishness of a divorce and stay together. Now that you have two children, you are going well. Stay here. So I, I did my own thing. I found a job. And this, this. So I was uh, in the neighborhood. I said, okay, let me go and pay them a visit. I went, the husband was there, the husband was helping because the wife is still uh, <laughs> uh, not uh, well, so he was hoovering and doing everything. So I came home. In my heart, so that's why you should not give up on anyone. God has not given up on them. In my heart, I was just coming to visit. I had no intention of even making a single prayer or even uh, opening a single scripture. I, I knew that she, she never... Uh, does it willingly? She, uh, she almost, almost said, I'm always forcing her to come and pray. So I said, Why, why bother? So I just came to see them, see the baby, because I like babies. See the baby, and then bye bye. So I came in. Immediately I came, she, a smile came up to her, to her ears. And, uh, <laughs> and she called, she said to her husband, Stop hovering, stop hovering, come. She turned off the TV, turned off the radio. Let us pray. I was surprised. I was caught off guard. Let us pray. I said, did I ask for prayer? I said, no. At 
when you come, we always pray. I say, ah, we always pray when I come, and when I used to come here, you were no, never willing to pray. And she saw now the hand of God. The storm of barrenness has been blown away by the Lord. Your storm also be blown away in the name of Jesus. Wake your Jesus up. He's not asleep. Pray. Pray. And pray. And Jesus awoke in that uh, uh, chapter 4. And he spoke to the wind. Peace. Be still. That's what I speak in your situation. Peace. Be still. That storm that you are going through. Peace. Be still. In your immigration status, in your marriage, peace. Don't panic. <laughs> Don't take a flight ticket anywhere. <laughs> no, 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 no. Peace. Be still. God is going to fix it in the name of Jesus. Don't go on Christian dating site. Peace. Be still. They stole your money. <laughs> Christian dating site stole this money. They will steal more of your money. Don't waste your time there. Peace. God will do it. Peace. Be still. Don't panic. Peace. Be still. <laughs> Peace, Deborah. Be still. Whatever you are going through, the Lord is saying, I know you are going through this storm. So peace. Be still. I am not sleeping. I'm not dead. Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. The only reason why you are going through that storm, the enemy has raised hell against you, because God wants to use your mighty on the other side oh, yes. to deliver people that are bound with legions of demons and to send them as missionary. That guy went in 10 cities, they got police as 10, 10 cities, and preached the gospel. That was the reason why the enemy was fighting uh, that journey. Wanted to abort that journey. Paul also was in a storm. Acts chapter 26 to Acts chapter 27. God said to him that you are going to appear before Caesar. He had the word from God. Not just the word of God. He had the word from God. And then they sailed. They were caught in the eye of a cyclone. For 14 days, they went into circle in that eye of a cyclone. They lost everything. Sometime in life, you will lose everything. Through divorce, you will lose everything. Like I said to my sister, you are going for a storm. You lose everything. Even the boxes, the husband refused to give a, a suitcase. I said, leave the suitcase. Leave everything. But God is going to deliver you. God is going to deliver you. They lost the cargo. They lost, you may lose your business and everything. But you are going to make it to that destination. You are not going to drown. You may, the Bible says all hope that they will be delivered was uh, lost. Including the hope of uh, Paul himself. And then that night, Acts chapter 26 and Acts chapter 27. And then that night... When God has already spoken to you, he does not sometimes bother to come the second time. He just sent his angel. That night, an angel of the Lord appeared to Paul. And the morning, Paul woke up. He shook himself. He said, Be of good courage. Eat. Many times we fast because we are afraid. When I was in Dongevo, the first day I said, I need to come out of here. So I fast for five days. The third day, five days without food and without water. The third day, the Lord said to me, the word from the Lord. Some of the word from the Lord, I don't like them. <laughs> I told you. The Lord said to them, eat, take courage. Because this captivity is for a long time. Ah, what kind of word of the Lord is that? <laughs> take courage, eat. Ah, because this country is for a long time. I said, no, get behind me, Satan. But I know the voice of God. <laughs> and then I went to the country. I, I lined up in the queue with my plate to protect some food. 
because I knew this captivity was for a long period. Paul claimed for me to fast for five days. God was not going to be moved. God had a job for me that place to preach the gospel, to lead many people to Christ. And we led many people to Christ in that place. Hallelujah. Church! Church! Are you with me? The word from the Lord. Sometimes you will not like it. Your flesh will scream. That is the word from the Lord. And I'm glad that I went through Don Kefu. Because it sped up the process of my immigration. Otherwise, I would still be fighting with them through the court and so on and so forth. Then I could kick my lawyer. I could sit with the home office face to face and talk to them without the lawyer. And because you are your best advocate. The lawyer would put things the lawyer way that you can speak your heart to another person that is in front of you that would understand your situation. You are not just another fire. I was glad that I went there. When I look back, I was glad. God's plan was better than my plan. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. We all go through storms in life. But you need the word from the Lord. And Paul woke up in the morning and said, there appeared to me an angel of the God whom I serve and to whom I belong. And this is what he said to me, that none of your lives would be destroyed. All of your lives would be spared, apart from this cargo and the sheep that is going to be destroyed. But God would save all of your lives. As a church, you need a word from the Lord for all your church members. Many people they run away from me because I can't tell them don't do this. Don't do this. Why are you trying to control my life? I'm not trying to control your life. I'm trying to save you from a ditch. That's why God is revealing those things because that wants you to fall into a ditch. Blind leaders of blind, they would all fall into a ditch. So God is with you in that boat. That's why we have a Bible study sailing with Jesus. Many of the things that I write is recorded <laughs> because we went through those things <laughs> and then we wrote it down. You are sailing with Jesus. Don't jump overboard. Paul said to them, if you stay in this boat, even if you are going through a storm and you are in the eye of a cyclone, as long as you don't jump out of this boat, your life will be spared. Amen. But if you jump out of the boat of Jesus, you are on your own. Stay with Jesus in that boat. No matter how the wind is boisterous, stay in the boat of Jesus. Don't jump out. Don't quit ministry. Another pastor in Dongeva became a Muslim because he was in prison for that God has abandoned him. Another pastor, he took his head and banged it against the wall. Boom! Brain aneurysm. Because he thought God has forsaken him. Are you with me? God has not uh, forsaken you. Paul is writing to us. Paul, in 1 Corinthians, that we've read that with my team, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse, from verse 7. He says, from verse 7 to verse 15. Today we are just going to pray. It's not a healing because there are no sick people, physical sickness. So we are going to pray for our storms. We all have. If you say you don't have a storm, well, <laughs> then God lied, uh, did lie to me. Second Corinthians chapter 4, from verse 7 to verse 15. This is what the Lord says uh, through the, the mouth of his servant Paul. He says, But we have this treasure in this earthen vessel. So, Monica, you have a treasure. In these earthen vessels. Melissa, you have a treasure in you. In these earthen vessels. This is only a vessel of clay. But you need to identify that you have a treasure in you. And if God says you have a treasure, so you have a, a treasure in you. So that's 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 to verse 15. We have this treasure in earthen vessel. Why? So that the excellency or the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed, okay, in life, in ministry, at work, 
On every side, we are hard pressed, yet not crushed. Though the enemy would press you hard, the situation life would press you hard, but he will not crush you. Don't think that, oh, I'm, I'm at the breaking point, I'm at the breaking You are not at the breaking point. He will try his best, but he will not be able to crush you in the name of Jesus. So Paul continues to say, he said, we are perplexed, but not uh, despair. Not in despair. So you may be perplexed about your life. Will I ever get married again? Sister Rosemary, you may be perplexed about those things. Will angel get another father? You may be perplexed about those things. But don't be in despair that you can marry anybody just to, to, so that your daughter can have a father. Don't be so desperate. That's not who we are. We are perplexed about life. We are, it's okay for us to have those questions. But we are not that desperate that we are going to do something that is so foolish. Because now that we have the Holy Spirit, it is the spirit of uh, wisdom. <laughs> And if you like it, ask. You will give it freely. We are perplexed about our situations in life. But we are not in despair to do something that is stupid and that we are going to regret again. So he continues and says again, we are persecuted, but not for a second. So you may be thrown into prison and all kinds of persecution that you may have. But God has, not, God has not forsaken you. He has not. And many times when you go through storms, you say like Brother Peter, don't you care that we are perishing? Have you forsaken us? Have you abandoned us? God says, I will never leave you. And I would never forsake you. Why? That's Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4 to verse 6. I will never leave you. And I will never forsake you. Why? So that you may boldly say that the Lord is my helper. And I will not fear. What can man do to me? If God is on my side, they may try their best. They may press me hard. They will not be able to crush me. They, I may be perplexed about my situation. How would the outcome be? But I'm not so desperate to do something that is so foolish. They may persecute me. But my God has not forsaken me. I will come out of this storm. My God say, let go on the other side. He did not say that we would drown in the, in the, <laughs> in the middle of that journey. He did not say that. He did not say that. And I kept on, many times I keep on reminding myself of the promises of God. The word from the Lord. I keep on reminding myself. The word from the Lord. The word from the Lord. That's what you and I need. And Paul reached the other side. They fell on the small island of Malta. And then the snake came to bite Paul. It was Satan all along that was behind that storm. God was not behind that storm. But even though Satan has brought chaos in your life, God will beautify it. He will give you beauty for ashes. The oil of gladness for the spirit of heaviness. God, in Isaiah chapter 6, Israel was a wonderful oak tree, straight and tall. But that oak tree now was cut down. There was only now a stump. And when people looked at that stump, they said, nothing good can come out of this stump. Because they said, no, 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 no. The holy seed is in that stump. It may look like there's no more life in that church. It may look like there's no more life without the husband around. It may look like uh, there's no more hope for your situation because it looks like just a stop. Job says, at the sight of the rain, go send the rain and that stop will shoot forth new branches. It will no longer be the same. Don't get me wrong. We would always miss that person that we loved. He was dear to us. He was unique. He was special to us. But from that stump, God says in Isaiah chapter 6, the holy seed 
is in the stump. And God will send the rain again. It will shoot forth new branches. New branches. So, the holy seed is in the stump. For some of you, that's the word of God for you. And it will shoot forth. It will not be like the previous one. But God is going to do something new. He said, Behold, I'm doing something new. Something new. So weep no more. Why? Revelation chapter 5. John was presented a scroll. You have a scroll about your life the scroll of marriage, the scroll of employment, the scroll of uh, uh, immigration. The scroll of church growth, the scroll of health, whatever scroll you have in your life. And that scroll had seven seers. And he looked for someone on earth that could open that scroll of his life. Nobody on earth could open it. He looked under the earth, the demonic power. Satan, can you do that? Satan said, I can't do that. He went to Andrew Michael. Michael, you are the general of the army. Can you open this scroll? Michael said, that's why you don't need to pray to Michael, to Gabriel. They are your servants. They are ministering spirit or your servants. We don't pray to the dead saints. They can't help you. We don't pray to those dead saints. They can't help you. Michael could not do that. John the Baptist could not do that. No one also in heaven could do that. So he wept profusely. And then the voice came from heaven, weep no more. Why? Because the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, he has prevailed. He has been the only one that has been found worthy to take the scroll of your life, to loose the seven seals. Also, if has been tied up in your life, that storm you've been, that eye of that storm for so long, God is going to loose it in the name of Jesus. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Lose all the parts lock in your life. And open the scroll. And read your destiny. This is the plan that I have for you. You have peace, not of evil. I want to give you a future, a bright future, and a hope. No longer be in distress or in despair. God is with you. And if God be with you, who can be against you? So shall we pray? We stand, we kneel, we sit, you pray, but you for the pray. storm of your life. You pray for the storm of your life that God will do something in your family. That if it is salvation of your family members, you pray. Mary of your children, you pray. God to bring back something new out of that stump tree so that you shoot forth new branches. You pray over that stump tree in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Each one of us pray now. our heart, but I'll pray you pray as well in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you and we want to give you all the glory. We want to give you all the praise and all the adoration. Thank you for the storms of our life. Father, we know even if we are going through storms right now, you are sailing with us. You are in our boat. You are in this boat with us. We've shed so many tears. We, we have so many questions that we do not understand, my King and Master. Why is this sickness resisting us? We bind it again and again. It is still resisting us. We know the storm, Father. You speak today. And we would have a word from the Lord about this storm, about this sickness, about this marriage, about this divorce, about this pregnancy, about our children, about this widowhood, and everything you would teach us, my King and my Savior. I pray today, King of glory, that you are going to speak to us directly, that I speak to the storm of our life, I say, peace, be still. I rebuke every storm. I don't know specifically each of the storms of the people, but I know you spoke to me about the storms of our life. So I speak today to every storm that is raging against your sons, every storm that is raging against your daughters, every storm that is raging in the families of your sons and your daughters. I speak to those storms. Peace. 
mysterious. The storms of celibacy, the storms of immigration, the storms of barrenness, the storms of finances, the storms of employment, the storms of ministry, the storms of whatsoever the name of sickness and disease, whatsoever of mental illness, whatsoever the name of the storm of the people are. I speak peace, be still. I rebuke those storms in the name of Jesus. Go back to the pit of hell because my God did not send that storm. A demon sent it. But even if you have made havoc of what belongs to us and of our life, Holy Spirit, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against it. So lift up a standard against this storm in the name of Jesus. Let there be a contrary wind that will come and annihilate that storm of the enemy in the name of Jesus. And Father, I send it back to the sender with an intensity that is multiplied by 10 in the name of Jesus. Those who sow the wind would reap the whirlwind. So the enemy that has sown the wind in my life, in the life of my, my sister, in the life of my brother, in the life of my mother, in the life of my father, my king and my savior, I send back a whirlwind to the camp of the enemy. Let it sweep clean everything in the camp of the enemy. Let your whirlwind go back. Now they sent only a storm, but I'm sending them back a whirlwind with an intensity that's multiplied by 10 in the name of Jesus and let it destroy everything on its way in the camp of the enemy in the name of Jesus let everything be wrecked in the camp of the enemy in the name of Jesus and Father we give you all the glory we give you all the praise and we give you all the adoration Father we bless you for this message we give you the glory and we give you the praise for what you have spoken to us tonight and I know we would have a testimony we would have a testimony of you not just stealing the storm of our life but we've made it to the other end what you said to us we should go and father we will give you all the glory we'll give you all the praise and we'll give you all the adoration your name is worthy to be praised thank you for everyone who has come here you know the prayer point you know the heart desires grant them the desires of the heart Dry up all the tears, like you dried up the tears of John that could not find anyone on earth, under the earth and in heaven, to open the scroll of his life, to lose the seven seals. But now we found Christ Jesus in my own life as well. Open the scrolls, open the scrolls of my life. Lose the seven seals that I also may rejoice with your people. Because those who sow in the kingdom, they must also be the first to eat of what they have harvested. And Father, we bless you for everyone on the sound of my voice. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. Thank you for tonight. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Now, since everybody is already well in the name of Jesus, those who need special prayers, we would pray. But otherwise,